Bud Light, I like the taste. That's why it's that's why you're gay. Is that, what, is that gonna be the beginning of this podcast? <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be the very beginning of this podcast, baby. <laughs> but we're back at it with the sports podcast episode fourteen. Uh, I got some things going on this weekend, so don't be expecting. We might do something tomorrow before I leave, but I'm going to Florida this weekend to visit my parents for Mama's Day. So uh, I will not be here. Early next week, we might get on. It might be online because we can't really meet up. And then we got some some new plans for the regular podcast coming up here soon. But for now, we've all been watching the NBA playoffs. I know uh, that's one thing that's really been going on in sports that all of us have definitely been paying attention to. So, I mean... We've had some close games. The we it's it's been a lot of upsets. Uh, type of shit have you guys been seeing? I know we've had a couple close games with like the uh, the Celtics and Philadelphia last weekend had like an overtime game that went right down to the wire. Of absolutely crazy game. But uh, what have you guys been seeing recently? We'll start with Stolzy. My main takeaway from watching like the past week basically is like I'm super comfortable with my pick from last episode talking about that the champion's going to come out of the West. Like you look at the teams that are all around, like Boston, like Philadelphia tried to give Boston that game seven different times the other night. And Boston just would not win. Yeah. And it's like, you have 19 seconds left. You get the ball back. You got multiple timeouts. You don't call a timeout. You go down with Jason Tatum. You wait till there's five seconds left on the clock. Then you start driving. You get locked up. Then you pass it to Marcus Smart, who was the guy who shot both of your biggest threes of the game. Mm -hmm. It's like it seemed very like college basketball. Yeah, not just not just that, but like the the East is kind of like the Knicks are playing the Heat, and I think personally, I think it's going to be Lakers and Heat in the finals. Um, So we're going to get like a seven eight matchup. I think that was. But uh, Jimmy Jimmy Butt's been playing out of his fucking mind, and but Play besides that, the Knicks the Knicks are fucking garbage. They're by far the worst <clears> team left in the playoffs. I if they survive tonight, right now they're up by it's close, but I don't think the second half is even started. I don't see them making it out of Game Five. If they do, I don't see them making it out of six. I personally think the actual championship is going on right now. The Warriors and uh, Lakers seem to be the best two teams in the league, in my opinion. So, I mean, uh, would you yeah. guys agree with that? If the Knicks could send Julius Randle to the moon for anything, they immediately probably beat the Heat in this series. Um, Julius Randle is not good at all. He's a ball stopper. The best player on the team is Jalen Brunson. Not even close. That dude, like, think about the fact that, like, how do you think the Mavs are feeling right now if they let Jalen Brunson go yeah. and got Kyrie instead of Jalen? That would have been nice to have. <laughs> but Dude, I mean, and they Brunson, got rid of him, bro. Brunson's been playing yeah. the best out of all the Knicks. So, I mean, it's just, I just don't think that's a really stacked up team. They're they're relatively new, aren't they? Their rosters has kind of been like thrown yeah, together this young. year. So, yeah, they're they're, they're, they're they're probably getting some shit together. We might see like them a little OB bit Like it's Obi Toppin's first big playoff. It's uh, right. Jalen Brunson's first big playoff series. Like, Yeah, and Julius Randle, I know you mentioned him, who's supposedly their best player, but... He's a Kentucky guy, so me and me and Wallet know him well. But like, he wasn't much of like a scoring threat at at, uh, at Kentucky or anything like that. He was he was a good guy. He was good at getting boards. He was a physical player. But like, that doesn't necessarily translate to the high flying offenses that you see in the uh, in the NBA. And with that being said, too, also with the high flying offenses and a uh, young team, this uh, the Phoenix Suns are lightweight going to be scary next year i'd imagine that them and the mavs mavs will be the top two teams in the league in the west the next year um i know you don't agree with the mavs but uh the the, the, the suns they have right now paul's on the bench and i know he's getting old but they're they've only been formed within like the last two months and kd and booker are absolutely playing phenomenal the only thing is if they don't score 70 to 80 points a game combined then they're not they're not going to win that game so right i hope i hope the heat and the Sixers. I, I I like the some of the UK guys on on both of those teams. Bam out of Bayou, uh, for the Heat. Um, Speaking of Bam, oh my I, god, dude, he's a beast. Oh man. My he god. went off in the last it, game. Do you, do you know what's crazy though about Bam, man? Like like Calipari was talking to teams when he was going up into the draft, and they're like, man, he's like low key really good. He can be like a consistent, uh, you know, big man down down low and can be really physical mm-hmm. and can score the ball and, and play defense and rebound. And I didn't see it. And yeah. the fact that he got drafted that high, he went. I think he went 13th overall. Like, I was yeah. surprised they, by that. And then 
boom, I see him, bam, yeah. <laughs> I see him in the <laughs> playing in the NBA. And man, he's he's it, just he's, he's doing well. He's it, consistent. He's been putting on, talk? and they don't have Harrow on the field court either. And they look like the best right. team in the East. They look like yeah, the best it, team in the East yeah. by far. Like yeah. I don't know how they're is. an eight seed. That's what I was yep. about to say is, can we talk about how good of a coach Eric Spolstra is? Nah, why is. is he still there? It's cocaine. That's what it is. It's cocaine. <laughs> it's my, <laughs> it's my, it's my, I mean, that dude's watered all time. We were watching the game the other night, fucking, or on Saturday, and Max was like, I was like, that motherfucker still coaches for the Heat? And fucking, he goes, he goes, yeah, bro, just fucking extending his life with cocaine. And as they were doing that, they were like zooming in on his face, and he was just <laughs> wired, bro. Zooted. I was like, Meanwhile, I was like got, well, got, there you go. Right, yeah. Meanwhile, Pat Riley's got a whole room, like a whole storage room of like young children. He's taking blood from so oh. he can stay. Whoa. Oh God! Whoa. Okay, <laughs> I don't know about any of where that. Where did this just go? I'm out of that one. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's where you draw the line. I'm out of that. No, I mean I don't know anything about his, uh, you know, room full of whatever. But uh, a mobster. I love I love uh, Maxi too on the 76ers. I like yeah, him. He like dropped Kentucky, 30 man. last night. Yeah, he he's been playing really well. Uh, in the NBA, and I, and I just like him as a player. He's you know low key, like doesn't you know doesn't draw like draw a bunch of attention to him. He just play goes in and, and goes out there and plays basketball. Yeah. I I've, I like Tyree Maxey. I liked him when he was at Kentucky too. He he's good good dude. They they like wait got slaughtered in the first two games. The Seventy Sixers didn't they? Yeah, uh, yes. I think Embiid missed one game. No, they, they they lost by four in the first game, and then they, they got murdered the second game. And I, I like the Celtics. They're not they're not like an outstanding team. That's always been one of my teams because I used to love Rondo. And uh, back back when he went into the Celtics, that's when I kind of because Cincinnati doesn't have a team, so we don't really got anybody to like really pull for. I don't really take them like I'm not necessarily pulling for them to win the championship right now. It's anywhere where LeBron's at, but. Um, I like their uh, just all round aspect of that team. And, you know, you got a team like the 76ers with Embiid, of course, he's the MVP. And then you got like Harden over there, too. But Harden uh, is like, the dude doesn't play defense. He fucking, he's, he's hit or miss. Sometimes he's really on, sometimes he's really not. And it seems like when it comes down to it, he's not able to get his team to the next level. So I took yeah. the Celtics in six. But um, after the game last night, it's looking like that might go to game seven. The Sixers might pull it out. It really, I think Harden's the big factor in that that series. I think he really needs to step up if they want to take that. So, I yeah, and I mean Embiid is MVP. Yep. Um, you know, I mean, Joker's. Dude, it took PJ Tucker getting in his like literally getting in his face like yelling at him, take the fucking game over, dude. Like because he was literally like when when you're Joel Embiid and you're getting absolutely stuffed by Al Horford time and time again. Horford's that man, like, though. dude. I get that. Horford's I like what in his You're 50s. the MVP, dude. Yeah. He's all yeah, he's dude. like 36. Dude. But like how old is he? He's like 36. He's like LeBron's Al age. Horford? Yeah. yeah. He, I'd imagine he's his in his whole late thing, 30s, bro. He was on that his, back-to-back Florida team. I was like, thinking he yeah, was Al Horford's whole thing. Yeah. His whole thing is that he won't retire until LeBron retires. That's like what he's living by right now. Really? I didn't, yeah, I didn't know I saw that. a video about it. He's yeah. an old dude, but the dude's still balling. I mean, he, he, he is, last dude. night he was oh, dude, he's playing. Last night he was forcing a little bit too many shots from what I saw. Like he was he was taking a little bit and he was like it was taking the team down a bit. But um yeah. nah, he's still a good guy. That's what I was talking about. Like the the Celtics, they don't have like that one all-star player, but they've got a bunch of really good players. And that's why I'm I kind of like him. And that's that's why we were talking about it last week too. You see some of these teams in the NBA playoffs and stuff. Like you got you got these young teams like the Grizzlies that come in and fucking. By the way, <laughs> did you see that that uh Dylan, what's his name Dylan Blake or whatever? Yeah, yeah they sent him to. Uh, they they told he talked that though. he talked that shit to fucking LeBron and fucking they informed him that he would not be playing for the Grizzlies next year <laughs> because they fucking put it all on the Grizzlies. But what I'm saying is these old vet teams like they might be old guys. They might not be in their heyday anymore. But they're the teams that are making it farther in the playoffs. Like, yep. it, it, there's something about having veteran players that's going to get you to where you need to be. And we're starting to see teams like this, the, like the Durant. Of course, he's a vet. Booker is becoming like from this playoff series or whatever that we're seeing. He, people are starting to put him on like that pedestal of the next guy. Like that's yeah. kind of what I'm seeing. So we're starting to see a little bit of the mixed things. But I don't think that Phoenix is necessarily going to come out with that series. I think. I think Memphis is end up going to take it in seven, but um, not Memphis. You mean Denver? Uh, Denver. I um, always get them confused. Jokic yeah. is Jokic is so good. Man. Just, and it's like yeah. I was saying. It's like I was saying on the last episode. Like when it comes to the playoffs and it comes to a best of seven series, it's so hard to take the team that isn't 
that doesn't have the best player on the floor for mm-hmm. those seven games. And until they meet up with the Warriors or the Lakers, where and the only reason I think LeBron is still better than more multifaceted overall than Jokic is all over the floor and controls the game more than Jokic does. And then with Golden State, they have their three through five players are better versus Denver. So when you're looking at the overall series, you would think Jokic, Curry, and then all of a sudden it's four or it's, you know, Jamal Murray and then four or five Golden State guys before you get to another Denver guy. Mm -hmm. So that's when the matchups kind of come into play and – you know, you have a Clay Thompson game this night. You have a Steph Curry game this night, and then all of a sudden, boom! It's two two. Yeah, and anything's going. Yeah, and the thing about the the uh, God, I keep wanting to call the fucking Grizzlies the Nuggets. Uh, the the thing about them is too, like you said, Jokic is gonna fucking he's gonna go off or whatever. But they're struggling against Booker and Durant, who are really still trying to find their team. When we put one of these vet players like we're coming in from the Lakers yeah. and, the, and Golden State, it, it's just gonna be something else. Plus. Right now, uh, you said it before the playoffs even started. You said going into this, the Lakers got the hottest defense in the league right now, and they, they really do. And what they've got a team like LeBron can step up, do his thing. AD has been a little bit spotty, but you got people like D. Russ and Reeves who are just randomly putting up fucking 25, 30 points in, in, in series games and stuff like that. Yeah, and LeBron's doing this. Yeah. He's just sitting back like, here, you guys take it. Yeah. Like, D. Russ, you want to score 19 in the first half? But, Great. but that's I'm the thing. Trail. But then you have, like, things like, you know, the game's getting to the on the wire, and I think it was <clears> the last game that they played two nights ago. Um, And, like... You have LeBron jumping over the crowd and going into the stands or whatever, saving the ball. The next time he does a fucking 360, 360 cutting in between two players. The next possession, he's he's hitting fadeaway shots. It's like he's not the guy anymore. He's not. He he's still the face of the NBA. He's still LeBron, but he's not that guy who's going to step up and hit those plays unless he needs to hit those plays. Like yeah. it, like it, it's just crazy. So when you have one of the guys who has weak link that game, fucking you have the guy who's going to step up. They're all around he's on got both like... those teams. I've so. just never seen a player that has such like a light switch effect where it's like, I'll just turn it off right now. And then if it's starting to look sketchy, we'll flip it on. We're back in the game real quick. Right. Well, yeah. Stolze, you said this is LeBron's best team. And you can tell because honestly, if he has the ability to kind of sit back and let, you know, some of the other players take over, that's where, he, you know, that that's yeah. right now in his career. That's the best thing that he can you know that he can do because he and it's nice that he actually sees the opportunity to be able to do that because okay. then that allows him to not have to take over or or force things necessarily yep. right and keep in mind too like that doubt or they uh Dallas Mavericks beat him what four to one when he was in Miami with that yeah. team before they beat OKC the next year so it's like this might be his best team. I mean, look at what they're doing to the Warriors right now, up 3-1. to one. You, know, like, you know why it's one of the best teams, too? I kind of want to bring this up on the podcast, too. Imagine what it's like to be Russell Westbrook, who got fucking traded middle of the season to the Clippers, and now all of a sudden the team has completely turned around. And I'm talking about <laughs> the fucking the Warriors and uh, the Lakers being the actual championship game this year. I think that, that's, that these are two best teams in the league. And, like, Russell Westbrook gets on, and I've been saying this year and years and for years now about Russell Westbrook. He's a, he's a stats patter. He's a really good player. Yeah, he can average a fucking triple double for since Oscar Robinson. But the thing about him is he does not make his team better. Every team that he goes to becomes exponentially worse, man. And it's like you, get, you put a guy through all the, the three way trade, and you get a guy like fucking D Russ, and fucking uh, over the weekend in the game that D Russ was playing, the dude was balling. He was three for three on his first three point shots hitting fucking turnaround fadeaways and stuff he was like shooting 90 percent for the first like two quarters it was it was crazy it was crazy and, yeah. and like it's like you replace one russ with the other it's like fuck fuck russell westbrook bro We're tired. yeah i yeah. totally i totally agree with you yeah. he does not make any of the teams especially now in his career in in the last in my opinion several years that he's been playing no, he did not, even not several. Made... since the fucking thunder bro he was doing the shit with the thunder like yeah, i mean they they were playing well as a is the you know a, a, you know big three or whatever you want to call them yeah they, they seemed like they, they had, had some Ibaka, good harden durant russell westbrook yeah, like that team it, was absolutely crazy but i think that, that one of the reason why they weren't so good is because you have guys like durant and westbrook who are both kind of pat statters and yep. or, or, or stats patterns and stuff. So yep. I think that's why they were unsuccessful in getting the championship there. Yeah, he's all about himself. Yeah, for sure. Especially now, for sure. Yeah. 
So with that being said, like let's go, let's kind of go over like what we think is coming out with the the remainder of the series. Um, so right now we got uh, the Knicks and the Heat are on, correct? Yep. Yeah, Knicks and the Heat are on. That mm-hmm. is Game Five. Um, the Knicks <clears throat> are up by three at halftime. I personally think that the Heat are going to come back and take this series, and I think they're going to win it five, uh, four one. What what are you guys feeling? Uh, I don't think teams like clinching on the road, to be honest. Like, I know that you're like, we'll take it when we can get it. But when you're in a series where you're up 3-1, you feel like you're in control. Like, it's, it seems like, I feel like, like I feel like Lakers win in six. I feel like, um, Boston wins in six or not six, uh, seven. seven. And I feel like the Miami wins in six and it's like, I don't know. I just it's so hard to win four game. What did they lose the first game or win the first game of that series? I can't remember. Okay, so they've built, they've won two in a row. Uh, the Heat have. So I just don't. It's it's hard to win three in a row like that. Well, you just, all... I I don't know. I you're trying to do like the whole like home for home court of like away court like advantages that's and a stuff real like that. thing though it is but i don't necessarily it's it's a lot less of a thing in the earlier rounds and the late rounds so I, i'll give you that but i think that a lot just has to do with momentum and i think heat have all the momentum right now and the knicks just are not as good of a team that's why i'm taking no. them tonight over over the knicks the, the knicks can't get the shit together so what do you think wallet I, I would agree with that and honestly i think if they can have a little bit of rest in between series yeah, it's going to help gonna some help, of their veterans. It's going to help them a lot against Boston or uh, Philadelphia. Big time, yeah. So I think they want to get it get it done as quickly yeah. as possible. And we can go into that, we can go into that <laughs> series next. If you I was going to say, if you're the Heat, who do you want to play? Uh, I mean, obviously, you probably, probably Philly. In my opinion, I think you want to play Philly. I think Boston has a little bit more experience with everything, uh, with like playoffs and stuff like that. Then um, the, first year coach. The, what? First year coach. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Yeah, no, nah, but Boston. Yeah, I, I think that they'd rather play Philadelphia, but I think it could go either way with them. I, the Heat are already my favorite to go to the national championship or not national championship. NBA finals. NBA yeah. finals. So yeah. <laughs> You're still on March Madness. Yeah, I still am in March Madness, but they're, they're my team that I think is going to the, the championship. So um, I, I got them. I think they're going to beat whoever they w- uh, play, but I think matchup wise, Philadelphia is better. So. Yeah, I agree with that. I think they'd rather play Philadelphia, to be but honest with you. I honestly think that Boston's going to pull it out, though. I was saying in six, but after watching them last night, I think that they're going to have to go and take them out in seven. Um, but that's also just a little bit betting with my heart. So, um, yeah. Well, they're down three to two, so they'd have to take them in seven. Yeah. But I, I think yeah. the Celtics are I, – I think Philadelphia is going to beat that. I think they're going to beat them in, in game six. You do? Yep. I think it'll be Miami and, and Philadelphia. I really think Embiid and, and Harden are, are hitting a, a stride right now playing together um, and throw in Maxi and some of the other uh, guys on that team. I think they're hitting a, a really good stride and, and playing really well within each other, and I think they're going to they're gonna take that series. Well, the get, last game Harden played all right, but the game before that he was not there. He, he right. Was, yeah. He right. Was, and then he hits a game-winning corner three. Yeah. So I think he he's rebounding just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He's one of those dudes like you just let him shoot till he gets hot because once right. he get like once he gets hot the ceiling is so is so insane. I don't. Yep. He's just a little bit older I th- now. I think like, that's exactly why fucking teams that Harden's been on have been unsuccessful because all they do is lob up threes and wait for him to get hot and that's not a successful way to win a fucking basketball. Well, they also had Russell Westbrook, especially on him. consistently Correct. seven games <laughs> yeah, in a row. Just gonna say. <laughs> they also had Russell Westbrook on him. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Who Russell Westbrook's just jacking up. 35 footers and then crashing the boards to go get the rebound right well uh, that's, and padding his stats that's, that's <laughs> yeah. the way i see harden and that's why i just don't see harden as one of those guys who's successful in a long run championship winning harden team. facilitates the ball very very well I was yeah. Harden's say a that. very good but passer. he doesn't play defense yep. he's lazy fucking forces a lot of shots and it's plus minuses and, and, are still and good he's though. honestly a choke artist when it comes down to the long run i don't i don't like harden i, I don't know if you can tell but i can see that right yeah <laughs> Kind of get that, but game on the line. I want Harden to have the ball, not Embiid. <clears throat> Depends on how much you're yeah. down by. I think I'd rather have yeah. Embiid. Embiid can hit those fucking clutch little mid range shots. Watched, if you I need, just watched. If you Embiid. need three, Harden, of course. But if you need, I just if you watched need a bucket, Embiid. Embiid. 
I just watched an, I just watched Embiid for an entire quarter be scared of another person on the floor. Yeah. Not want to take a shot. That's that's like, right. literally he was a shell of himself. That's part of the reason why I don't like Philadelphia in the series. But I, Oh yeah, I there, I think there's way too much like mental game, like mental head ca- head casing in Philadelphia mm-hmm. for sure. Yep. For sure. sure. All right, let's move on to another series which uh let's go ahead and do the other uh western which is the Nuggets and the Suns. Um, who, who you guys got? So right now it's three, two, um, uh, Denver, sorry, uh, Kevin, a little bit of a brain fart three, two Denver. I think that, uh, the nuggets end up taking it this next game. Um, they're going to take it in Phoenix, but I, I just don't see, like I said before, you need 70 or 80 from Durant or Booker to get a fucking, a win there. And I just think that that's so hard to do against a team as good as the nuggets. And, Jokic is fucking playing absolutely phenomenal. Has been yep. the, the entire year. Honestly, got ripped out of MVP this year, and I just think that they're too tough of a team. They're going to move on to the Western Finals. I agree with uh, you. Hit the nail on the head on everything there. Yep. I agree with you on that. Yep. Joker is a hell of a player. Triple double last night. Uh, it's uh, it's insane. He he, he fr- sleepwalks triple doubles. Yeah. Dude. He does, man, and he literally freaking. It looks like an ogre. <laughs> he's such a dude, big. He's dude. got you know I mean? he's got that old man game yes. where it's just like ball comes in he, like you're at the wreck and some old dude's just pop he's not even yep. grabbing the ball he's just flicking it over to the over other post no yep. problem he, to a he plays with such, cut. like he, he <laughs> plays with such like such a smooth he's got such a smooth game man he does yeah. he doesn't force anything he's a it's fantastic the same thing with, uh, fantastic like, facilitator the same yeah he's a Luka fantastic. doesn't facilitate as well but it's just that same like it's that smooth like just it, get to my spot and I'm gonna make the bucket. And think every about time. that. Think about how much bigger Joker is, and he facilitates yeah. better than guys that are guards in the NBA. That's why he's. That's why he's so insane. Like if you it's get insane, like you have Michael Porter and you have uh, Murray around him, but it's like if you get some like absolute lethal shooters to where yep. he's just gonna draw double teams all day, and you can just find old vets that just put him okay. in a corner somewhere and just yep. here you go, like. It would be so hard to beat them, be and that's what and hard. and that's why it's like that's what they need a know, guy like Luca. That's on what that the team. Lakers. It's what the Lakers do so well because like when you have LeBron bringing the ball up the court, he draws so much attention, and LeBron's going to make the right basketball play and kick it to Reeves in the corner, or you know what I mean. Like mm-hmm. it's just so hard to defend when somebody can make the correct basketball play ninety to ninety eight percent of the time. Right. Can I ask, like, who is so? Let's say the Lakers win that series. Who who would you think? Well, they that's would where we're going play? next. So let's go ahead. And I know, but that. like, like who, who who do you think they w- would rather play between the two I, teams? I I think the Lakers would rather play the Nuggets. I think Phoenix spreads the ball out, spreads the floor too much, and it's hard to keep up. I I just don't want to like. It'd be hard to play the Warriors and then play mini warriors yeah. the very next series and win both series especially yeah. if this one goes seven also if you got the 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 suns are right now they're really momentum driven team so like you you let them get too much momentum that might be a dangerous team when it comes down i remember when we were talking last week i said a team like the suns might have a chance of just sneaking up and taking a championship from everybody because they're just that team right now like booker is like guaranteed 30 points a night and Durant is damn near the same thing. And fucking, if they can hit that seventy points a game, like they're they're pretty good. I think I think they'd be close almost every game coming out. But I do agree with you on Stolzy or Stolzy that they would probably want to play the slower, more methodical basketball of the Nuggets uh, with the with the type of defense that the Lakers play. So, <clears throat> who yeah. do the Lakers have that could stop Joker? AD. But, AD. Yeah, yeah that's I true. mean, I don't think AD is going to fucking shut him down by any means, but AD right. is one of the best defensive no, but, players to fucking play the game. Like, the if you can keep him, magnet. if you can keep him at his season averages, then you know how to prepare for the rest of the team. Yeah, like you right. just Joker can have whatever he wants. Make Murray, make Porter Jr. beat you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if they played, if the Nuggets and the Lakers play, um, which I think is going to actually happen, I, I think AD just has to, like Stolzy said, just keep him like at at an average. And then the rest of the things will just fall into place. Uh, so yeah. 
Yeah, I personally think that this uh, Lakers, let's go ahead and move on to that. I think that this Lakers and Golden State game, I think it's going to go to seven games. And the reason why is because you can kind of see the league wants this to be a fucking really good series. If if you've yeah. noticed anything, like I'll, I will admit the, the Warriors have been playing sloppy ball and they've been fouling a lot in both of their series. But the, the it was some crazy shit like the Lakers went to the free throw line uh, two nights ago. Uh, more than any other team in the history of the playoffs for that game. Yeah, and, I was just about to bring that up. Yeah, and I was like... And it looks... Because there's been a lot of focus on that. Even coming into the series, I felt like there was a lot of talks about how many free throws the Lakers have gotten even throughout the regular season. Mm -hmm. And it seems like now it's going to be here come the whistles in favor of Golden State. We can switch it right now yeah. at home and we can extend this series... Especially, especially if uh, Denver and Phoenix is going to go seven, they're gonna they want this one to go seven too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think they want this one to go seven regardless. Maybe Lakers get it at home because you know <laughs> if they're going to get homered. But I think it's more if they just want to like this the, make this extended uh, as long as possible, get the ratings and stuff like that. But uh, it kind of sucks that we're talking about it in like a fucking rigged type of scenario. But uh, as we said, these professional sports, they have the guys that they want to want in the playoffs or to go far in the playoffs. It, it's yeah, it's the way money works. It's the way ratings work. I don't think that it's not necessarily fixed, but calls are going to go for the Lakers, I think, by the end of the series. And I think it'll go to Game 7 in, uh, in Oakland or fucking San Francisco, Bay Area, wherever the fuck, uh, Golden State. I mean, and I it's think not gonna, even... Lakers will take it in 7. It's not even just pro sports, dude. Like, if we go to an Elder basketball game versus St. X at Elder, it's going to be a completely different officiated game versus if it's at St. X. Yeah. yeah. It's just, like, it's just the way it is, man, because the refs feel the home crowd. Like, if that home crowd's rocking, the refs feel that, man. Yeah. I'm yep. telling you. And there's times where they'll put a, they'll keep a flag in their pocket because they don't want to get screamed at again. Right. Yeah. Yep. Especially in the NBA, where these fans, dude, they are next to ruthless. You. <laughs> like they are ruthless. next to you, bro. It's like, hey. and yeah, they let you have it. All right, so who are you taking, Stolzy? In the Lakers series, yeah, Lakers and six. Lakers and six, and you, Wallet. Uh, I hate the Lakers because I hate LeBron, but we I know. would have to Shut agree up. with Stolzy. <laughs> I would say Lakers and six. I, I think the momentum is on their side, yeah, and the 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 pieces around dipshit are uh playing really well so fucking disgust me with the way you talk fucking about hate him James. that's that's cool yeah but, get the career ending injury but i think we've kind of gone on in the series i don't He's really want to he doesn't i don't really happen shut up stole <laughs> okay anyway let's move on from the nba i think we kind of got all that we need to with the playoffs that we've seen this past week and moving forward to the uh conference finals so um do you guys want to talk about the the Bengals a little bit I mean, who day, first and foremost? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Joseph Lee. Joseph Lee. Um, I want to talk about the fact that the Bengals somehow weaseled their way out of not having to play in London, but the rest of the AFC powerhouses do have to. Cool. So yeah. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I can bro. only assume that our our dear friend Joe um, just looked at Roger and was like, look, bro, I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not giving the home game up. It's just... You think, Sorry. You think that's how it actually You, you took a home game from me last year, bro. I'm taking one from you exactly. this year. Exactly. Go get exactly. fucked, brother. Yeah. yeah. But the I think one thing that we can say, we'll go over this pretty quick, but I think one thing we that can say. That might have actually, that might be a low-key makeup call by the league. I was just When you think about that. it, that might be a low-key makeup call. Yep. Just thinking that. I think they rewarded us because of that. Absolutely, yeah. as they we were very good. Possible, as they should. Possible, but they need to hurry up and get this fucking Euro League started, so we don't have to have teams from the NFL going over and playing in Europe right now. Because I think there's a game in Germany and shit too. I just, I just I don't I understand that they're trying to expand into those markets, but like it it doesn't it's not conducive towards like a good season, like a good balanced season. Can you imagine a Euro football league? You're like walking in, and there's just Mounties outside of the gates. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to take it serious, dude. I'd be walking in and be like, "This is well, nah, dude, it's gonna no be a, way." It's gonna be a couple <laughs> decades before like European football leagues and stuff like that even get anywhere close to the point where they could yeah, compete they with that, have like fan generation on an international yeah. level. But like, it, it is nice to see them doing it because American football is so 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 cool of a thing. It's such a great sport. And it's starting to get into other markets. It's just not quite there yet. So I can't wait to be able to talk to our people across the pond about about some fucking 
good old fucking gladiator, modern day gladiator sport. You know, NFL teams hate going overseas too because it's a you, such a time change. It's yeah, such an it's, adjustment. It make you guys see what the did you guys see what the Chiefs did? No. No, what? So the Chiefs told the league that they're not playing the Bears in London. They're just like, they're like, I'm not like, why, we can, why would we go to London to beat them when we can so do it here? You had to play the Bears. <laughs> like, there's literally no what, point. So they're just going to take the loss? No, yeah, do they have that authority? So I don't know. I, nothing's came of it because they were talking well, about, about it. How about we, just cancel, the, about how about we just cancel the game and give them a fucking coin flip? Yeah, no. Why don't we just send the Pro Bowl there every year? Who cares? Right. Half the Pro Bowl don't want to go on the Pro, Pro Bowl anyway. Just send it's the Pro stupid. Bowl every year. Exactly. No, the, the fact that the Chiefs and the Bengals are playing New Year's Eve is pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's I, what I think it's talk. hilarious. I think it's hilarious that the media spent so much time saying, like, it's going to be first game of the season, Chiefs. No. Bengals and the NFL is just like yeah, no, like you guys no, couldn't have been more off. No, actually. they're picking yeah. the last game of the year. Well, they're they're <laughs> setting it up to be like this this AFC championship before the AFC championship. Yep. But they also, yeah. like I said, things could play out in a way that that game doesn't really matter, and fucking a team has to put, bench their players. It like yeah. it is that late in the season that it, it could work out that way. It depends yeah, on I mean, how far people, other teams are, how things healthy. work out, but. And it could also make out for a AFC Championship game before the AFC Championship game. To be completely yep. honest with you, I will call. I will say this right now: going into Arrowhead Stadium that late in the season, I would rather lose that game and and be ready for the AFC Championship game. I'd bench my players regardless. I, I, that game's completely irrelevant to me at that point in time. As long as we don't need it to like make it to the playoffs or seeding right. really matters. Like yeah. I'll, I'll take I'll take a three seed three seed Bengals in the AFC Championship. At fucking Kansas City, after we just lost to them four weeks ago, uh, I'll, right. ta- I'll take that. Yeah, if we have to bench our, I'd rather bench our players if we've already clinched. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I think don't it's kind of fucked up though how we just like adopted a uh, a fifth division opponent though. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That seems like that's like we're now, playing them every year. It's, it's going to be forming it's, a rivalry. Well, that's Tom what, Brady. That's man. what happens yep. when you're when you're the two best teams in a conference. When you're going oh, right, it's just like because, God damn because the way the schedule's set up, all the top teams play all the top teams in the AFC. So right, yeah. Well, it's happening. Well, you play top. you play it by division. You don't just play top teams. No, you the way the way it works is if you finish if you finish first in the AFC North, you play the first team in the East, West, and South too each the next year. That's right. how they, that's how I make it, and then you right. play, then you play one AFC division team, your division twice, and then one NFC division team, and I think with seventeen games they added one other NFC team, right? They did, right? But what yep. I'm saying is, is that it's usually never the same team every single time coming out of the yeah. AFC West or AFC South, and all of a sudden all, it's like well, the Chiefs it probably feel the same way, where it's like all of a sudden. They feel I th- like we're I think half that's a part what, of the AFC West. I think that's what makes the NFL so beautiful because they do set it up that way. So if you're a team that's dominating your division, oh, you're yeah. going to have to continue to beat the best yep. of the best in order to stay at the top. And these, yeah, the exactly. parity of the NFL is undefeated. These, these right now are the two top teams in the league. So, yep. yeah, when you got those two quarterbacks, they're going to want them to play. Oh yeah, I want to see him play. Yeah. It's the I best. want to see him play too. It's must see TV, man. Yeah, exactly. the other thing is, I wish it could have been a little bit earlier in the season because, like I just said before, that late in the season, you never know what's going to happen. It might be something Scary. where a team just doesn't like, like the Baltimore game last year, right before the Bengals. Yeah, the, they, they benched. The they benched all their players. They they did not care about that game. They were preparing for the first round of the uh, right. of the playoffs. It's just it's just the way it works that late in the season somehow. That's but, a, that's another good point because like, why can't we just get like an early November, late October Chiefs Bengals game where it's like still decent weather. No. You know, let I, and Mahomes guys, and Burrow just like air it out for guys, a week. We gotta we gotta play Buffalo again next year. We gotta play oh, we trash. we gotta play fucking uh the 49ers next year. There's a couple that worries me. The, the, we gotta play the <laughs> ja- we gotta play the Jags next year. Like yeah. there's there's some there we have I looked at the strength of schedule I sent it. I don't know if you looked at it, I sent it in the group chat I think earlier today. We were tied for 13th. We're about middle of the pack of strength of schedule this year. Um, the AFC. Joe Burrow's outscored Trevor Lawrence by like 200 points in his career. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not, I... I'm not too worried about that. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, there's some good matchups this year that the Bengals correct. Have. And it's, and I don't want to go into Kansas City and New on New Year's Eve having to win, right. having to win that game to make it to maybe the following week or whatever, however many yeah. games are left to to make it to the playoffs. What? And that's why. Did he leg out? 
I think so. I think he lagged out. Do you know before? I don't know if he's going to hop back in. We're getting we're getting close to the end anyway. But um, do you know what division we play in the AFC and NFC this year? No, I don't. the schedule comes out tomorrow. Yeah, is it this I know. Tomorrow the eleventh. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. Well, I think we know teams, but I don't think we know dates. Right. We don't know dates, dates. correct. Well, I can't remember, though. The date, the, what well, the dates come out tomorrow? Well, probably, okay. well, scratch, usually we open versus Steelers. Scratch it, scratch that. It doesn't even matter because at this point, if we're going to have those tomorrow, I do want to do like a whole fucking predicted season. Like, for so, sure. So next week when we come on and do the sports podcast, be ready for that. I'm talking like actually go through the schedules. Yep. And, and mark win loss. You don't have to do scores or anything like that, but that'll help you build who's the top bottom of the division. So I'm down for that for sure. Yeah, Let's do it. And then we can do it again at the beginning of the year, right before playoff, or and then like right before playoffs or whatever. And I'm talking going all the way to the championship game. So Go on. we had our yep. very early picks. I picked 49ers and Bengals. We'll see how see how things go. But you know, drafts coming over, free agency and stuff. Uh, all the moves that have happened. We kind of got like a beginning of the year. Middle of the year, right as the season starts, and then we'll see how it all goes at the end of the year. So who day? Yep. All right. Stolzi's having some issues over there, so I don't know if he's going to be able to get back in there. But do you have any closing comments, Wallet? I don't. Just Joseph Lieberow. Oh, his Stolzi, you're working. Your mic's working. You got anything I've you want to say? Um, I wasn't talking. Oh, you're, no. you're you were first. Joseph Lieberow. <laughs> just just oh. say Joseph Lieberow. Yeah. I think like literally that's what I said. Oh, that's fantastic. I knew it. Stolzy, we're, we're on. You know, it's fantastic. Okay. Well, yeah. closing comments on episode 14 of Your House of Rules of Sports Comment or Sports Podcast. <laughs> Joseph and Joey Bo- Trust. And Joey Trust. And Joey Trust. Joseph that's Lee right. Burrow. That's right. Peace, y'all. Peace.